Hey guys, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Fuller. I'm Connor Cummings. And today we're going to be talking about a possible link um, between the short Trek Calypso and what's going on with Zora in Season 4 of Discovery. Uh, you guys have, of course, seen that those Zoras kind of got sentient, developed feelings, um, is having some, you know, things that we saw in Calypso. And Calypso is an anomaly because, you know, the ship was put in a nebula and it's told to sit for a thousand years, and during that thousand years developed a sentience. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the Discovery A, it was the original Discovery. Uh, so there's a real disconnect, and I'm hoping they tie in, because I think Calypso was the best of the shorts. And I really want to see some kind of tie-in. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I still have my fingers crossed. And now that Zora is kind of displaying the same kind of, well, it's the same voice and everything, um, the same kind of attributes that we saw in Calypso, I don't know where it's going with it. And Samuel has some thoughts, apparently, so I'm excited to, to hear these. I mean, it's one of your pet topics, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, and this it is, is certainly a Zora-featured episode. I mean, Zora got more screen time than any of the bridge crew put together. <laughs> <laughs> but it was definitely a Zora story, so they they and they definitely you know they they you said early on where's the Zora stuff? They gave us little teasers mostly last week and a little bit the week before, but really this was the big one. But yeah, so I will reiterate what Michelle Paradise showrunner said. Although as we know, the the people lie, and not necessarily in a malicious way, just a case of well, if we told you that if we told you the answer, that that would be a spoiler for everything. So often you just have to lie just to save people's emotions and, and give them the experience. And so she said that, I believe, in the up to season three, she said, yes, we obviously know about Calypso. That was a bit confusing for us because that was two showrunners ago, and she has her own ideas, and they never planned to go to the future back then, and yet they accidentally went to a, about a thousand years of the future. Sort of coincidentally, oh dear, that's canon. And she said it was canon. And, and her interview said, yeah, that's that's another thousand years, is kind of her mentality. It, it's off in the tall grass at some point, but this is her future, that's that future. Obviously, they didn't have the Discovery A, to, so all that stuff is confusing. But when you obviously call the, the computer the same thing, you get the same voice actress, I mean, you're, you're very much acknowledging, but you're now giving us story beats. But it does it does confuse me and sort of amaze me that they're, I felt they are sort of undoing it as well, because what more has this AI got to learn? And, it, you know, it's explicitly the sphere data inside the ship which has evolved, not the ship itself has evolved. It's the sphere data taken on its own life. So it, it definitely all sort of conflicts with Calypso as well. And what's the point? That This thousand years of waiting means nothing in the retrospect when that short was clearly telling us evolved in the thousand years. That is now a moot point. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm I mean, you can wreck on out, fine. But it's like, you know, they went a bit full on this week is what I'm trying to say. It is Star Trek and it is sci-fi, so anything is possible, for sure. Um, you said, what else could Zora learn? She still has to learn about love. I mean, she learned about fear and anxiety in this one. Is this, does it take a thousand years to learn about love? Would, would they just abandon the ship, repaint it, say, oh, I'm well, not even repaint it. They'd have to restructure it. Just, you know, put it in a nebula and say, learn about love. We'll be back in a thousand years. <laughs> in, in fairness, though, and I will give them credit if this is a setup, they explicitly burn a lot of the, the, the Enterprise, the Discovery's hell. We don't quite get a sense of how bad, and I'm kind of sad about that, but Saru does say, wow, Epical Matter, amazing thing. You get to repair it real quickly, or like rebuild it, which I feel like might be a hint as if we can do it once, we can undo it quickly. You can also, re it's, it's, it's programmable matter. You can reconfigure it, and it's, you, know, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm. Wouldn't I mean, it'd be, it'd be easier to reconstruct the old one than to you know whatever? So that might have been a slight hint. Maybe maybe that's why maybe that's why they built the dry dock so they can build a discovery classic like from fresh, put Zora in that, and then send it. You know, might be what they have. Maybe maybe it gets to the point where they need to wipe Zora's memory uh, because she gets a little crazy and maniacal and even reset. I can't do that, point. Burnham. Even to the yeah, even to the point where they have to trick her into thinking she never went to the future. Hence, why they put a discovery shuttle, one of the new warp capable sh discovery shuttles, in the shuttle bay. If if they're going to do something elaborate and need to kind of reset her, that might be the way to do it. And then they send her back in time, sit her in the nebula for a thousand years, and then come back for her literally like the next day, <laughs> and because she did something totally evil or sinister 
Although obviously risking the sentient AI that you know fought the other sentient AI in a, in ever for a thousand years, a bit of a risky move because anybody at any point could find it. Now, obviously, they also introduced the anti-federation. At least that's the subtext in the short, which says there's a war fight. It's, yeah, Vidrash, which they did mention previous episode of Discovery as a very offhand comment with no specific context. It was kind of like, oh, this. And then they're not fighting a war in the Federation. Well, that might be the out-of-universe threat, perhaps. Well, that doesn't really make sense. So I feel like maybe they they have just said, we'll take what we like from Calypso and burn the rest. Because it doesn't matter. You know, we like Zora. Uh, we like the Thousand Years. And I mean, how would you feel if they said, okay, we're taking Zora, but we're just going to... That was an uh, other universe, you know, that we're not going to visit. Mm. Mm, I wouldn't be happy with that. I want it to be a direct tie-in. I want it to be, to be the same ship. I want it to be something like that. Um, which, I, honestly, I can see them. I can see there being a problem with Zora or a corruption of some sort where they need to reset her and make it so she doesn't think she went to the future. Because the, 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 the sticky point for that is the internals of the ship, the external of the ship, which are clearly kind of explained this episode with reprogrammable matter. You could probably change it. Um, but the shuttle in the shuttle bay, which was the Discovery shuttle, one of the new warp capable ones, that was a big story element for Calypso, uh, is kind of null and void at this point because they don't have any Discovery shuttles anymore. That being said, they can make new ones whenever they want. So, although you, you know, you would think a sentient AI computer with the knowledge of a thousand or two thousand years, not and... just deleted. Well, you can't though. You can't delete sphere data. We've already established that. You can't actually exactly. But you can delete most of it and have, it'll start reestablishing itself and configure itself in any way. And not going through all these experiences that are traumatizing for it, like what just happened in this episode. Maybe that's the new objective. I mean, in fairness, though, they couldn't delete it with 23rd century technology. You, boy, you can destroy that shit with 31st century by, you know, computer tech. I mean, come on, this thing can't out. out. Although that said, it's now getting access to those systems. So it's pretty it's already you know, re reengineering itself to be able to deal with it. I mean, I'm sure it couldn't have made this much evolutionary progress in sin, until the 32nd century tech came on board. Because the ship is heavily refitted. Like, it is a different computer core. I mean, everything's different except the look of the interiors. So maybe it, it needed the advanced technology to kind of jump it forward again. Because that has never been established. But it wasn't talking in season two. It's only in season three. And then four. That would be, that makes sense. Kind of even more dangerous then. Because now it's utilizing all this even more advanced stuff. Just like the Borg, you know, once they got the trans century tech, the hue, you know, the hue was well, one was even more powerful. Yeah, that's that's my thinking though. Like, mm. there's no way to remove the sphere data. There's only like, th this is the best solution is to reset it and kind of trick the ship, let it evolve on its uh, its own naturally instead of bringing it to the future, shoving it with new tech, taking it on these dangerous missions while it's just learning about itself. Better way to do it is reset that back to childhood, essentially throw it in a nebula, let it develop slowly its intelligence. And they literally said in that episode of Calypso, they said, shit, they've been here a thousand years. The crew left and said they'd be back one day. So it's that indication. It's waiting to be collected. Exactly. So that the and if they do it a thousand year thing, it's, that matches up almost identically. I mean, there's too many simul similarities um, with the thousand years with the Zora personality. That I think I think they're working to kind of fix things and get things to mesh. That's my hope. Whereas I'm kind of wondering. I'm very optimistic just... about this. <laughs> I'm wondering that maybe it's just an alternate universe. They're just they'll say that happened in universe 13B, like in parallels. You know, there's lots of alternate universes, and but and so in our universe it went one way, evolved a lot quicker, and that universe took a thousand years because it wouldn't be the same personality, like. Yes, yeah, so you'd need the sphere data either way. That Zora is going to be radically different. You, you know, the AI, you know, the well, the non-AI, just the, the the computer of the discovery will not become Zora. In the same way, the sphere data connected with it will become Zora. They're just, you know, you can't put two thousand years of knowledge into you and be the same. It is speaking with a slightly different cadence. From what I remember, it's more seductive, or it's more, you know, it's more soft-spoken. I feel like it was a different inclination, more computery the last time, which makes sense if it was just evolved from a computer. And it hasn't been interacting with people, really. It's been reading well, yeah. the files. Well, knows, not at all. It knows what yeah, happened yeah. True. leading up to the, before it went through time, I guess. So it knows the personality profiles. It knows its orders to sit there. And then it runs into this new guy. It doesn't really say much at first. And then, yeah. Yeah. What the idea is the computer's thought itself into existence. I feel like, though, the way they're presenting it, 
and you know doing a reset is killing it because it will not evolve the same it can't evolve the same i mean it never had a thousand years to evolve it had two and two thousand years of data so if they're re resetting it to let it evolve it'll it's, it's, a, it's killing it it's saying we don't like you make a new one and they've spent such an episode saying this is a living entity that's that's murder it, and you can't get away from that it won't be the same person like just yeah, things like that happen though a lot of times in shows like this where the something goes wrong, you have to sacrifice and do, and do the get, get the best possible solution. Like I said, if Sora is something that sh she feels completely guilty about, like let's let's assume she does run into sentient machines and ends up having to destroy them, even though she herself is one, and she feels extremely guilty about it to the point where she feels like murdering the crew as a result. You might come to this conclusion that we need to reset this shit because. We did what we had to do, and now our ship is mad at us. You know what I mean? So there's always things that okay. pop up like that. Can I throw out another another thing, another little addition yes. to that? Because we're we're we know time travel's outlawed, but there are always exceptions to the rule. They haven't lost the tech; they just you know outlawed from using it. Because it's, it's still got to travel back. It's not going to be the year four four thousand. We're going to suddenly cut to that's not that's not going to happen functionally. So what if you know they've got the star charts of the galaxy, and we can spore drive a ship anywhere? And we know we can link ships to spore drive, whatever. So what if they they know a nebula which basically no one ever goes to ever in the history of a thousand years? Because they they you know, or at least in Starfleet space, it's like well we have no records this until like three years ago, so we know this is not a thing. And then they send the ship back in time along with some uh, cloaking spheres around the nebula. So it is future tech in the past, but it's like really advanced cloak, and so now the nebula is fully cloaked. So that's pretty certain the thing's not going to be found. That, that you know that, that's doubling down, and so whereas we saw it in clips as an anomaly, if you if you even zoomed out one second, you'd see like invisible well, thirty-second fair, century drones. We've both we've both played Armada and Armada Two, and the green nebulas you can hide your ships in, nobody mm -hmm. sees them. Yep, they, they also recharge well, they while it. they're in there. Well, they hid it for sure on purpose. But I'm saying if you add like that, if you if you end up cutting to clip, so. You know, as soon as the ship leaves, jumps to warp, like, you, uh, say if we ever saw it again, we'd see these 32nd century drones, which are also providing another protection, because you can't risk, you know, because if it's replicable matter, it's future tech. So you can't let that be found a thousand years early. And this thing is already proven to be super dangerous while we're resetting it. So hiding it, really hiding it, is kind of cool. Or maybe you want to go mega, mega clever. What if it's in a pocket reality? What if they, like, make a time dilation field... So they're in a nebula and say, yeah, we're going to time dilate this nebula a thousand years, but in real time it's only two months, and then pull the note ship out. And so Kraft comes in because he's tracked it weirdly and then comes out. Yeah. And you, know, you could do some jiggery pokery to kind of link it in. Wouldn't it be neat, though, if um, it turns out that, in fact, Kraft is Burnham and Book's son? We have talked about that, yeah. something happened about with Burnham and Book that they couldn't make it back to the ship. And the ship kind of got forgotten about, and he was the one that happened to stumble across it. One more twist. What if it what isn't? Twist? Okay. What if it, I mean that's that's great, but what if it's less direct? What if it's just the ship is in a nebula in the present, right? And Kraft is actually a thirty-first century Starfleet member. Guess his mind pulled out, wiped temporarily. New personality put in. He sent in as a test. For Zora. Just a test. It's completely controlled. See how she works. Is she ready to come out yet? And it takes away all. I mean, he's still a person, just. And then, then, we, then we can see Kraft now as a Starfleet officer in the present, just chilling. And everything we see in that episode was just a pure. Like, like Degra in Enterprise. It's a test for Zora. Super confined, super specific. Comes out. Then we suddenly see Voyager A. And it would kind of fix all the plot holes. Um, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't need the. And maybe Kraft even knew him or something. Is like if you want to go that direct, or Burnham handpicked him something, and then it kind of fixes all the little plot holes. Kind of like put Zora's consciousness into a holodeck creation or recreation. With this is how you actually develop your sentience. Well, no, double down. There was no, there was no thousand years because it's sphere data. Exactly. So that's what you, I mean. You you erase that the memory portion and you make her believe. Maybe she, maybe you like start around eight hundred years, <laughs> or like like nine hundred ninety nine years. And you make her wait six months for Nebula, thinking it's been a thousand years. Seeing how those processes would run, and then the, then the, the trial comes in to test. The test is the important thing. The thousand years is a red herring. Well, the thousand years is important though because if the, that's literally what they do, it is a test. 
as soon as she gets out of the nebula and she starts aligning her star charts, the stars have all moved a thousand years. So to say that she's in there a thousand years, everything would match perfectly. Yeah, yeah, fit yeah, the story. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why you reset everything to like, yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, that. I'm, that's a that's a very eloquent solution, actually. It, it's all a, it's all a test for the AI. See if you know she's. And you're not deleting most of the entity. You're just deleting the temporal bit. And maybe you can even go full on. I don't know what film it was, but Zora knows that she's broken, so she self deletes her own memory in a way because I, I feel like even them doing it is a bit of a can they so if she does it to herself wipes herself kind of that portion back to a season two place does what we just described comes out and now it's like she's just sort of i guess a window yeah, i really think this sense as we talked about earlier it's it's for starfleet to have a ship like this isn't a good idea and i think it's going to come down to a harsh discussion between vance and burnham of should we do this and vance is like yes we we have to do this and Burnham's going to kind of fight again for Zora, but Admiral Vance can be like, we can't allow the ship to be making its own decisions because it just screwed up a mission or something. And, and double down, you can't, you can't lose the only working spore drive ship. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't even have it out of commission for days or weeks. They rely on it too heavily as an instant response craft, especially when the the new burn pops up ten thousand lights away. Well, we can't just. Well, how do we get instant information? Discovery, that's the only way. There might be ships 10, 10 years away. You need that. So I love the idea of making all the, all the trial and say, okay, I'll take it. We'll give them a month, you know? Put the thing in the month. It's all a test. Boom, comes out. X, Y, and Z. That's really, that, and that's elegant, as you said. That's a really, like, simple, elegant way. And then you can imagine, what if episode nine say, cut, we watch Clipso again in the episode? Like we, we uh, maybe they bring the but they, they film some new elements so they kind of like enhance it, you know, like trials and tribulations. If, speaking of tests, what if they do find whatever's on the other side that created the DMA, and the DMA actually does this to Zoro without just in in the confines of her own computer banks, it it it's testing her perhaps, it's testing her, so it's. Because it is a sentient AI, or a sentient uh, machine on the other end, and it just wants to see how sentient she is. So it's removing. I don't then, know. Then why this... would it be the Discovery Classic from two thousand from a thousand years ago? That's the only problem. Yes, that's that's a little bit of an issue. Um, but yeah. I mean, anyway. Anyway. Um, okay, I think we've bam. we've solved it. That's the acceptable storyline. At least three acceptable storylines there, guys. For anyone watching from Discovery might want to uh you know use them it's fine but i like i like her caveat of yeah a thousand years and then she comes out of the anomaly oh look the stars are a thousand years different it's like <clears throat> yeah uh-huh yeah <clears throat> you weren't just in there one month <clears throat> yeah we had to we had to say that you were in there a thousand years because last time we did it you noticed that shit right away yeah yeah so. it's test number two <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it'd just be yeah. great if we start in calypso but they refilm new elements to kind of make it fit more and then we cut out and then and it says you know three days earlier Zora says, "I need to go into the. You know, I need to. Yeah, that'd be really quite fun. Or like we see, or like we see Crafters appear one day as a Starfleet officer. No mention of who he is. He's just some guy. He's not even called Craft because that's not his real name. It's like, is that is that the actor from? What are we gonna call you? What's your what's your act? What's your uh, alias gonna be? We gotta craft him a name. Hmm. I love mac and cheese. What do we what do we say? Well, <laughs> yeah, craft him a name. Oh, craft that'll work. Yeah, sure. Just like Han that. Solo. That mm. that uh." That thing, yeah. Anyway, well, it's not going to be. I think that we might have solved it, but I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts down below. Your ideas to link the two together. We've definitely talked about it quite a bit and gave you some ideas. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts though, so comment down below. If we do lives where we talk about things like this, which we do all the time, uh, make sure you get notified of those by clicking the notification bell icon to all. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. And yeah, hope to see you in the live someday because these discussions are better with you guys. Yes, you help drive the conversation and pull us into a whole new dimension, reality. You really do. You really do. And spots if you can to do those discussions, thoughts, and continuing missions onto more Trek as we're given four, five, six, seven, eight seasons of whatever we are presented. Help us out via super chatting on the lives. That makes a big difference and it's the direct communication or the passive way, monthly, Patreon, or joining the YouTube channel, both exceptional ways, or one time donation at trackguards.com. That is the PayPal. We thank you in advance if you can't just say hi to the lives and uh, be part of the conversation. That's right. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. Oh, I'm Carl Cummings. Bye, guys. We'll see you later.